the sickle cell disease initiative really came out of a keen awareness by ASH that this was a disease that really needed more attention. Despite sickle cell disease being identified as a genetic disease well over 100 years ago, progress in this disease has trailed behind every other genetic disease. It's something that the community has suffered from for a very long time, not really having a voice to assist with their multifaceted needs. And so I think it's extremely important that ASH has decided to be that voice and I think is gonna go a long way to help improving the care in patients with sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is a chronic inherited blood uh, condition that um, affects children from birth until adulthood, where your red blood cells basically make something called sickle hemoglobin, that part of the red blood cell that helps to carry oxygen, um, doesn't work as well. And so when your red blood cells have a lot of sickle hemoglobin, they tend to break down, but they also clog up your blood vessels um, and cause a whole host of different problems, including debilitating uh, pain epilepsy episodes, as well as acute and chronic uh, organ injury. Sickle cell disease affects multiple different uh, ethnicities. The disease is actually international, and because of uh, both forced and unforced migration, almost every continent in, in the world now has individuals with sickle cell disease. The ASH Sickle Cell Disease Guidelines uh, represent a huge uh, effort by ASH uh, to really help develop specific clinical care guidelines uh, aimed at improving the care of patients with sickle cell disease, both children and adults. The key for it is that it's evidence-based and that it is, uh, we're using grade methodology. So really stringent methodology that is used throughout the medical fields to look at evidence base and make recommendations. Within the guidelines for sickle cell disease, there are certain organs that are mostly affected by the disease. Uh, the brain is one, and so there's a set of guidelines focused specifically on how to prevent injury to the brain. There's another set of guidelines that are focused on the lung, the heart, and the kidney. There's another set of guidelines on blood transfusions. Blood transfusions are a major treatment for individuals with the disease. There's another focus on cure of sickle cell disease as it relates to bone marrow transplant. And yet there's another focus specifically on pain, uh, which can be the hallmark of the disease in many individuals with the disease. We went through this uh, guidelines process so that we can help clinicians and providers out there from primary care providers to sickle cell experts to general hematologists so that they can better take care of their patients. There are patients who are cared for at institutions that may only see a handful of patients with sickle cell disease. And so we hope that the guidelines will help to make their care more uniform from institution to institution. We're not thinking about just the medical practitioner, we're thinking about the patients as well, so that we have guidelines that the patients can understand and take with them to the office if need be. We really have to emphasize the need for providers to adopt what we call a shared decision model with the patients. These aren't mandates for clinical care, they're strictly guidelines and uh, many of them are what we call conditional, meaning that uh, we suggest um, that you think about doing something based on the evidence, but you really need to sit down with your patients, discuss the pros and cons, and whether you implement that recommendation might be different for every patient. I think that even though we hope to cure sickle cell disease, that's really our main goal as a field, we know that we still need to keep working and take the therapies we have and the ways we know how to help patients with sickle cell disease and improve those modalities for the time being. The ASH Research Collaborative, which includes both a clinical trials network and a data hub, is going to be extremely important in filling some of those research gaps that our guidelines um, have identified. I think there are opportunities and infrastructure that's growing in places where it wasn't before where we can do the research that needs to be done. It's a complex process, but I think we're moving in the right direction.